The past several tutorials have been on promises. If you'd like to view them all, you can access the promise playlist that I put together. I've included a link in the description. Now, before concluding the topic of promises, I would like to do one more tutorial on the all and race static methods. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. All and race are two static methods that are part of promises. These methods are found on the promise constructor and they can be very helpful in unique situations. First, before we look at some examples, let's first look at the promise object that shows these methods. So to do that, I have this little bit of code that we used in a previous tutorial. Basically, we are creating a new promise, assigning it to P1, and it resolves after four seconds. Here is our then method. We have a function for that, and then we have a second function for reject. So if it's resolved here, here if it is reject. So I'm going to run this and we're going to take a look at the promise inside of P1. That's all we're doing at this point. So I'm going to refresh and then open the console. Promise is resolved. I'm going to type in P1 and take a look at that. We'll open this up in the console. We did this in a previous tutorial, but I want to show you something. As we looked at the prototype of promises, we could see that we have a catch method, a then method. We talked about both of those. Now inside the constructor, this is what I want to show you. Inside the constructor, we have an all method and a race method. And those are the two methods we're going to talk about now. Now because those two methods are on the constructor, the way you use them is by typing promise like this with an uppercase P dot all or dot race. That is how you access them. And that's because they are static methods. And this is how static methods work. So first, let's talk about promise.all. Now, the promise.all static method allows you to enter several promises in the form of an array. So inside of the parentheses here, we would pass in a in an array and that array would consist of promises. Now this method returns a promise which will only be fulfilled once all of the promises in the array are fulfilled. Okay, so we get a promise back but the fulfillment of that promise is based upon whether or not all the promises inside the array are fulfilled. If any of those promises re are rejected, the return promise is immediately rejected. If they all resolve, then the return promise will resolve. So if you are waiting on several promises and you need the data from all of them before you do anything, you need to use promise.all. Let's look at an example. So I have two JavaScript files attached to this HTML file. This is the first one that we looked at. It just sets up a promise so we could take a look at the promise object. It also has that console log statement down here at the bottom. The second one has three functions that are set up that return a promise. So first name, last name, middle name. So Basically, what we're doing is we're reaching out, grabbing the first name, grabbing the last name, grabbing the middle name. This is the situation that I've set up. Now, the promises are returning after a certain length of time because of set timeout, which I've included. Now, we could imagine this could be querying some server or some database, but I'm just using set timeout to simplify this so we can see how these all and race methods work. So after four seconds, it is resolved and returns my first name. After three seconds, resolved returns my last name. 
After seven seconds, it resolves and returns my middle initial. I need all of those to provide the information, which is my entire name. So let's look at an example of promise.all. So let me add a few returns here so we can move this up a bit and it's a little bit easier to see. So first I enter promise.all. Now inside the parentheses we pass an array of promises. Now promise.all will return a promise. So if we want to act on that we can use the then method. So I'm going to set that up first. And I pass in a function, the first function for then method. So that is if it's resolved, this is the function that we'll invoke. And what are we going to do there? We'll simply log to the console the message that is returned. That's what we'll do at this point. Now we have to specify the promises that are going to be passed in. Well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to specify those? These functions return a promise. So if we invoke those functions, we will have a promise. If we're using something like the fetch method, if we use that fetch method, that will return a promise. So that's how we can get some promises. So how would we do that inside of promise.all? Well, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to invoke those functions inside the array and then it will return a promise and that promise will be a part of that array that gets passed into the promise.all method. There's last name and middle name. So we have all three now. So let's look at how that would work. I'm going to save that and refresh. There's the first done from the first page. Once a total of seven seconds, because we have to wait for all of the promises to return, once a total of seven seconds is done, we get the promise being resolved for the promise.all method. And notice what it returns for the message. It returns an array with all of the return values. So of the three promises we passed in, we have the return values for each of them. You can see them here. So if I jump back really quick, you can see that the return value for first name is Stephen. The return value for last name is Hancock. The return value for middle name is W, period. And so we received all of those back. And it took about seven seconds. We didn't get anything until all of the promises were resolved. And then we got something, okay? Now this done is from the first JavaScript file, so I'm gonna comment that out. So that doesn't confuse things. So let me do it one more time. Now we simply wait until the promise from the all method is returned, and that won't happen until all the promises are returned. And so there we go, we get all of them. All right, so let's modify that just a bit. Let's take a look at what we can do to make this a little more useful. So let's say I want to print out the name. So it's simply a matter of grabbing the first name. That'd be the first value in the array. I'm gonna concatenate that to a space. And then we're going to grab the middle name, which is the third value, and that's position two, concatenate that to a space, and then we'll grab the last name. So something like that. Save that, let's go ahead and refresh and see what we get. We gotta wait a lot of time for those promises to return. And now we get a formatted name. And I had to wait for all three promises in order to get all the data that I needed to put that together. So that's the idea there. Now, what if the one of these promises is rejected? 
Let's go ahead and cause this one to reject first name. Going to save that, refresh. Now notice that as soon as that promise rejects, it comes back. It comes back with currently an uncaught error. And that's because we didn't specify a second function here to deal with the error, or we didn't specify the catch method. I'm going to go ahead and do catch. Just enter that in, and I will simply display the message that we received from catch. Like that. So there's our catch method. Now if we run this again, when it rejects, we get the message for catch, which is this message. Okay. So last name has returned, and it returned successfully because it had been three seconds. But when first name rejects, it doesn't show us what we got from last name. It simply shows the reject message. That's what we get with catch. All right, so that is promise.all. Let me change this back to resolve. And we're going to take a look at promise.race now. Now, the promise.race static method is basically a race. It's literally a race. Hence the term. Only the first promise that is resolved wins. All the others are ignored. So if you're waiting for several promises, but you only need one of them. So you have several promises out there you're waiting on, but you only need one of them. Race would be a great method to use. All right, so let's take a look at how that would work. Let's just change the all here to race. And I'm going to modify the console log message. We're only going to receive one message back. So we'll just log a message. Then I'm going to save that. Let's go ahead and refresh. And then watch how quickly it returns compared to the last one. It should only be three seconds. And we should get whatever value is returned first. And so if we look back at this, Last name is returned after three seconds, first name, four seconds, middle initial, middle name, seven seconds. So the value we get is the one that's returned first. In the case of this, it's last name. If I now modified this to one second, let's do it again. Race returns quickly now and we get the first name. So that is how race works. So now you've seen the all and race static methods. These are methods that are part of the promise constructor. And in certain situations, they can be very helpful. If you're waiting for multiple promises to return, consider using one of these methods. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face, I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.